preach on this subject. Exodus chapter 12. The Lord, for the last few chapters here, had been, as you, if you've read the Bible, know that God had been dealing with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the children of Israel go. And the Lord said, through Moses, let them go. And Pharaoh said, I'm not going to do it. And God said, all right. And he let the plagues come. A bunch of lice, frogs, the, uh, the uh, plagues of the water turning to blood, flies. And every time there would come a plague, Pharaoh would say, all right, God. All right, Moses, I'll do better. Let them go. And as soon as the plague would would be gone, he'd change his mind, harden his heart, and would not let the children of Israel go. Now the Lord got tired of it. And the Lord said, I'm going to do one more thing. This is it. As a matter of fact, you're not going to even get out free this time, Pharaoh. This time, you're going to catch it. He said, my judgment is coming on this land. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to get two things this morning. Everybody listen. I want you to get two things quickly. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be very, very long at all this morning, so I want you to listen real careful. Number one, you get this. God's patience does finally wear out. The Lord will not put up with a generation forever. He does finally do something. God is mighty, mighty long suffering. And He's letting us get by a long time in this nation. But God finally does say, all right, it's enough. Number two, God made a plan and God has only one plan to be delivered. Exodus 12, 1. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying... This month shall be unto you the beginning of month. That's the month of April. A-B, as they call it in the Old Testament. April is the beginning of a month in a uh, religious sense to Israel. Yom Kippur in September, October, is the new beginning of of Israel's civil calendar. But the Lord told them here, it shall be the beginning of months. That's April. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. He shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening." Now, I've not got time to get into this, but this is one of the greatest pictures of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus in the Old Testament you'll find. That is amazing, the resemblance. If you, if you did not believe the Bible this morning, you would have a terrible time explaining this. The tenth day of the month, there's only one other time that happens at Passover, and that's on the tenth day of the month when Jesus comes riding into Jerusalem in His triumphal en- entry on Saturday, and proclaimed liberty there and they worshipped Him. The 14th day of the month, the Lord was taken. There was probably a 100,000 lambs killed here in this offering. And the bottom part of verse 6 says, Thou shalt kill it. Over over 50,000 lambs and the Lord there called them it. Like it was one. You know what that is? That's Moses prophetically speaking to the Lamb of God that would someday come and take away the sin of the world. Verse 7. Now I need your help now, mamas. I need your help. Everybody needs to hear this real carefully. 
And they shall take of the blood and strike it, another picture of the cross, on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. They didn't say the windows. They didn't say the back porch. They said put the blood over the door. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire. Another picture of the crucifixion. How the Lord suffered our hell for us. And unleavened bread and with bitter herbs shall they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden it all with water. No water. The Lord on the cross cried what? I thirst. But roast with fire. His head with his legs and the per- with the pertinence thereof. Ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. That which remain of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded. See, you're ready to go. We're leaving town tonight, folks. Your shoes on your feet. Your staff in your hand. Ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Here's the great verse. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now, verse number 29. Look at verse number 29. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. I want to preach to you on the subject of the Passover this morning. And the first thing I want to say is I want to talk about the message of God. You'll notice, if you're familiar with this story, that all the children of Israel were in bondage to Egypt. Now the Lord said, I've had enough. He said, I'm going to get my children out of there. He said, tonight I'm going to bring one last, complete, final Holocaust judgment on Egypt. Egypt in the Bible is always a picture of the world. Now the Lord looked down and He said, I'm going to judge Egypt. And Moses said, yes sir, Lord, how are you going to do it? And the Lord said, I'm going to pass through the land of Egypt tonight. And when I pass through, everyone that in that city, firstborn, their oldest son, the, if they ain't got no son, the oldest dog, the oldest cow, the oldest cat in the house, the firstborn will die tonight at midnight. That was a message that God sent. Well, Moses said, but God, you mean all of our kids are going to die? And the Lord said, no. Nope. Your kids are not going to die if you'll do what I say. He said, I want you to get you a lamb, Moses. Every household of Israel must have a lamb. God didn't say, it's alright if you do this, or it's alright if you pursue another avenue of deliverance. God said, only one way, the blood of the lamb. Only one way, the blood of that lamb. He said, take that lamb without blemish. That's a picture of Jesus Christ. He said, put it up foot from the tenth day to the fourteenth day. That was the day the Lord rode into Jerusalem until the day they crucified Him. Four days there during that week. He said, put that lamb up. On the fourteenth day of that month, you'll take that lamb out. You'll, you'll slice its throat. You'll take of that blood and dip. Take his, that was like a branch off a tree. You take that. Give me some, some high on this thing, Roy. Could you please? And he said, you'll take that hyssop, you'll dip it in that blood, and you'll strike it, see? Up by above the door, on both sides of the door, picture of the crucifixion of Jesus. And he said, I'm going to pass through the land of Egypt, and I'm going to pass overlooking. He said, I'm only going to be looking for one thing. 
He said, I'm, I'm not going to be looking for who's religious or who's not religious. He said, I'm not going to be looking for who's educated or who is uneducated. He said, I'm not even going to be looking for who's bad or who's good. He said, when I pass through the land of Egypt tonight, I'm not even going to look to see who's Egyptian or Hebrew. I'm looking for one thing, just one thing, blood on that door. And he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. My, 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 that just sends chills running all through me this morning to know that God... Uh, boy, I tell you, we'd be in a mess this morning if God was looking at our lives, if God was looking at our failures, if God was looking at all the times we messed up, we'd ever one be in hell or on our way today. But when the Lord looks over this church this morning, He's looking for one thing. He's not looking for rich or poor. God's not looking for black or white. God's not looking looking for young or old. God's not looking for Baptist or Methodist. He's looking for one thing as He looks at our hearts this morning. He's looking for the blood. He's looking for the blood. The message of God was condemnation. I will smite all in the land of Egypt. God said, I'm going to come through there. There's not going to be one house where there's not going to be a dead person. The wrath of God abideth on them that do not have the blood applied. They were condemned already. You say, well, Brother Danny, what if they were a good man? And they did, they paid their bills. And they done what was right. And they helped out their neighbor. And they sent their kids to school. And helped them with their homework. And fixed good food for them. And cleaned the house. And, and didn't steal. And didn't rock no blood. God said, I'm looking for the blood. You see, what people don't understand is there is no such thing as a good human being. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If any of us ever get to heaven, it will not be because of all the stuff we've done for God. It will be because of what God has done for us that we could not do for ourselves. We're helpless unless God provides a way of salvation for us. Thank God that He has. It was a message of substitution. You see, they had to have a lamb to redeem them. God said, I'm coming through. I'm coming through tonight. You know what you've got to get? You've got to get you a lamb. A goat won't do. A cow won't do. A pig sure won't do. You've got to have a lamb. It's got to be a lamb without blemish. It's got to be a lamb without spot. Don't get one old sick one with a mange over here and is going to die anyway and try to offer it up. It won't work. Them old sick lambs with a mange represent uh, Buddha and, and uh, Guru Maharaji and Muhammad and all of them. He said, no, it's got to be one without blemish. It's got to be one that there ain't nothing wrong with. It's got to be without blemish. Like Pilate's wife said, that's a just man. Like the centurion said, that's the Son of God. Like Pilate said, I find no fault in him. There's the lamb that I'm looking for, the Lord said. And he said, take that lamb out there and make application. You take the blood. You're not not safe until the blood is on the door. And I'm confirming it by giving you this promise, Moses, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Now notice in verse 21, if you still have your Bibles open, their obedience. The Bible said that Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto the hymn, Draw out and take your lamb according to the families and kill the Passover. And on down through there, they begin to obey. Down there in verse number 28. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. It was not enough to hear about it. It was not enough to hear Moses' message. You had to do something about it. Now listen, you can come to church every Sunday, sit and hear the preacher preach. It will never do you any good until you act on it and do something about what you've heard. Moses told them, he said, you've got to get your lamb. You know what that, what if they sat there and said, Amen. 
Amen. You know, every time I hear Moses, I think his preaching is getting better. I really do enjoy that this morning, sir. God bless you. I sure appreciate that. Moses said, well, you going to get you a lamb? Well, I don't know. You know, uh, I'm, 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 I'm doing better. Really, I am. I'm trying to live a better life. Uh, he said, you better get you a lamb. It'll do you no good unless you take heed. Don't be just a hearer of the Word, but a doer of the Word. I tell you, you're, you're deceiving yourself this morning. If you think just listening to a preacher will save you and make, you know, some people that was out drunk last night and run around on their wife and everything else and they're coming to church somewhere in McDowell County this morning and they sit there like this, all dressed up with a suit and towel, you know, and they go home and that kind of relieves their conscience a little bit. And I think, well, I'm alright because I did go to church this morning. It don't do you any good to go to church unless you hear what the preacher said and then do something about it. You know, you got to do it. You got to do it. And so they did. And they did it. And they did it in time. All right, in our imagination this morning, let's go into Egypt and look around. You see, in, in Egypt, when the children of Israel lived, lived there, the, all the children of Israel lived on the other side of the tracks where the slaves lived. And that was called the land of what? Goshen. Over there where the children of Israel live. Over here, all the Egyptians live. When them plagues come, they just hit Egypt and the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. Now, the Lord said, you got to get you a lamb. And if you do not have a lamb, your, ch- your child, your firstborn, will die. My, can you imagine that? Can you imagine? Everybody in here, look at your firstborn this morning. Look at that oldest son. And look at him and say, my, my, my. I could, what if God told me this morning to tell you, if you didn't go home and do something this evening, that your child would die. Boy, you talk about shaking us up. You talk about uh, really getting to us. You talk about really bothering us. If we knew that God had spoke to us and said, if you don't do a certain thing by a certain day, then your child will die. I'd want to make sure I had it right, wouldn't you? I'd want to make sure I understood the message. I'd want to make absolutely positive that I was doing what I had to do to keep my child from dying. Well, anyway, it, they did it in time. Can't you imagine that day? Then the tenth day of the month come out and Moses said, Alright, congregation, get your lamb! Here goes the man. Honey, are you going to get our lamb? Yes, I'm going downtown. I'm going to, we got one out in the, in the field. He goes out and he gets that lamb all over. He looks that thing over. Buddy, he pulls that fur back. See if it's got any ticks. See if it's got any lice. Whatever they got. He said, he, he said I'm going to see if this thing got any sores underneath its leg. Lifts up its leg. Nope. No sores there. It lifts up its front leg. No sores there. Boy, you're just what I'm looking for. Boy, he takes that little lamb. Maybe he carries it. He takes it over here. And he says, all right, put it up. Feed it something good for four days. Those four days went by every day. That man would come out and check that lamb. He would go in and sit down at the supper table. On the third day, out down at the supper table. Honey, is the lamb all right? Yes. I guarantee you that little boy wanted to know if that lamb was all right. He'd look up and say, Daddy, now you sure you got one without blemish? He said, Yes, son. Everything's all right. You're going to be all right. You're going to live. Hey, brother, this wasn't nothing to joke about. This wasn't nothing to play with. I'm saying this morning, Salvation is the same way. This ain't no joke, folks. This ain't something to take chances with. If you don't know, y'all listen to me, all you teenagers, listen. If you don't know for a fact that you're saved this morning, it's not a joke. It's no life and matter. Don't leave this building till you know you're saved by the grace of God. The third day went by and the fourth day came. Rumor had done got around all over Egypt. That God said He was going to pass through that night. That evening the children of Israel went out. Took that little lamb, opened the fence gate, brought him out there and brought him to the house. They took him over there. And they said, alright, it is the Lord's Passover. That evening, brother, all over the land of Israel, in the land of Goshen. Slice went those knives into those little lambs 
throat. I can imagine Daddy standing out there with that little boy, and the little boy said, Now, Daddy, God's going to kill me if we don't kill that, right? And the Daddy said, Yep, son, this is a substitute. This lamb is dying in your place. Son, you don't have to die because this lamb is shedding its blood for you. And the little boy said, Oh, thank God He made a way. Thank God. So boy, that blood went out there in that bucket and some of it got on the grass. And they had a bucket of it there just real bright red. And that daddy said, now come here, son. Left the lamb laying there kicking and dying. Took that bucket over there and walked over to the door of their house. And that day he took, got him a, a, broke him off a branch there, a hiss that looked like one of them palm tree limbs there. And he said, now son, watch this. This is your substitute. Stuck it down in that blood. It just dripped all over. He goes, strike it. The Lord said, strike it. See, that's a picture of hitting Jesus on the cross. Hit it up there above on both sides. Neither one of them knew what they was doing. God put that in the Bible for our benefit, for our learning. That was a picture of one day, hey man, hey man, God ain't never had but one plan to take care of the sin of this world. Boy, I'm, my mind jumps uh, 1,500 years to the time when John the Baptist saw him. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Boy, that little boy in there went in the house that evening. They sat there at the supper table. I can imagine, boy, they sat there. And, and they sat there and they, they had that barbecued lamb by the end, you know, and had uh, gravy made out like country style steak and had unleavened bread there, yeast rolls, boy, and they, they were all sitting there and, and, the, and they looked around and they said, now son, you eat this meal, it is the Lord's Passover. Tonight at 12 o'clock, the Lord's going to pass through. They're going to eat there and that little boy said, well, glory to God, hallelujah. And boy, he was eating that. He's about 19 or 20 years old. They said, boy, thank God for the lamb. It not only took my place, but it tastes pretty good too. And it satisfies me and gives me... And gives Gives me food for my hungry body. And boy, they, that, that was going on all over Egypt. Can't you imagine there were some old drunken Egyptians coming down there on their way to the Super Bowl? And they were all coming down through there, a cussing and a staggering down through there. And there was them guys, <laughs> Woo! What's the matter with these fanatics now? Look at them over there, slashing blood all over. That's a sickening, it's nastiest looking thing. I wouldn't want a religion, that old slaughterhouse religion you got. And that little boy looked at him and said, Oh yeah? Your son gonna die tonight too. And they said, Oh, you're crazy. Quit trying to cram your religion down our throat. Man, you people are crazy. I'm pretty good. I'm going to Mass tomorrow and confess all of this. And they said, Well, I tell you one thing, buddy. If you don't have the blood on your door, your boy's going to die. You hear me? You get that through your thick noggin. If your boy, it don't, you don't have the blood on the door, your son's going to die. All right? Notice the midnight massacre. Here's the way it happened. It got dark at night and about 10 o'clock. Let's go back into the land of Egypt. The streets are kind of clear and quiet. Wind blowing up through there a little bit and the moon shining through them trees. It looks kind of blue-green out there in the land of Egypt that night. Settling down over there in the river there calm and once in a while a little puff of wind comes down the street real real quiet. You look into some Jewish homes there and you see the lantern, the lamp there shining through. Let's see. Brother Bruce, come over here just a second and say it. Sit right over in that chair. Brother John, you sit right over in that chair. As we look back with a camera this morning, we're going to look and see what God saw. In this home over here, come here, Sammy. You sit right over here beside you. Bruce, he's going to be your daddy. In this home, there sat a man and his little boy talking. Maybe his wife had died. Then there they sat talking that night. They'd done eat. Passover. Over here in this side, come on up here, Teresa. Come on, let's, let's, she's, 
She's going to represent this man's wife. Come on over here. Sit right there. Now the Lord looked down that night through the land of Egypt. And He could see what was going on in households. Over here, this man here is pacing the floor. Just pace back and forth here, Brother John. Like you're worried. She's knitting. Knit. Why? Girls don't know how to knit these days. <laughs> Over here in this home, his little boy is worried. Watch him. See? Do that. He's worried. Daddy's sitting here. He's peeked out. He says, Son, come here a minute. He opens the door and he says, Look at here. See that blood right there? You ain't got a thing to worry about. You ain't got a thing to worry about, son. The death angel's coming tonight. But you ain't got a thing to worry about. You'll be out playing ball tomorrow evening. He kicks back and starts watching the Super Bowl. You know why? Because he's done what God wants him to do. But over here in this home, this man's worried. He's saying, I don't know if I've done enough or not. Honey, what if, what if, how do we know Moses had the right interpretation? Honey, what if he's wrong? I feel guilty. You know what I've done the other day? I smarted off to this man at work and I just don't feel like, I believe God's going to kill our boy. He's in there. And you, honey, how do, what about all the other religions in the world? And I heard some of Pharaoh's men talking and they, they believe what they done. They went out and offered a sacrifice to their God and their kid's not going to die tonight. And how do we know for sure? And I'm not sure. And she finally said, for heaven's sake, will you shut up? He said, but how am I, how do I know? How do I know I've got the right thing? How do I know? She said, you put the blood on the door, didn't you? Yeah, I know, but, but, uh, well, well, you put the blood on the door, didn't you? Yeah, it's on there. Well, just relax, man. That's what God said to do. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Which one of those boys is the safest? They're both the same safe. That's right. They, he just the same. Their kid's laying in there in the bed. He's walking back and forth, wearing his head off. Listen, which one of them's got the, the most safe child? Neither one of them. That represents some people. Some people never enjoy their salvation. Do you know that? They just can't, well, I just don't know if I'm saved or not. I'm not sure. Have you trusted the blood of Jesus Christ? Brother, that's all God said to do for a man to be saved. If you have trusted the blood of His Son, you're in. You hear me? You're in. And He said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. You say, well, Brother Danny, I failed and I messed up a million times. Brother, that's bad and I hate it and I'm sorry, but thank God if the blood's been applied, that's all it takes for your salvation. There's this guy over here, another household, this boy saying, Dad, can I have the camel tonight? He said, no, you ain't going nowhere. He said, why not? He said, cause. He said, you know the death angel's coming through town and if any one of us leaves this house before midnight, we'll, we'll be struck dead out in the street. He said, oh, Dad, come on, I've got this date and I've been begging this girl to go out with me for ages and she finally said yes. And he said, no! But he said, down that town there in one of the Egyptian restaurants, they got a screen as big as them rocks there. And we're all going to sit around and watch. We're not going to drink or nothing, but we're just going to watch the Super Bowl and we're all going to have time, fun and watch for... He said, you ain't going out of this house! And the boy said, Dad, do you know that it'll lead to rebellion if you don't let work with me and let me do what I want to? He said, where'd you learn that? He said, psychology class. He said, I'm going to take my belt and beat the psychology right out of you. He said, I love you, son, and I don't want you to die. Now, you ain't going nowhere. Sit down over there and hush. And that night, it was 1130, and nothing had happened. It's 1145, and nothing had happened. 11.56 nothing had happened 11.59 nothing happened at 
12 o'clock midnight, Pharaoh heard something beat on his door. And there was a weird, spooky kind of feeling all over town. I can imagine a lot of the children of Israel were asleep in bed. Some of them were sitting up waiting. I can imagine some woman that was kind of worried was watching her watch. And when it passed 12, thank God, hugged her son and went on to sleep. Oh, that night, as somebody put it, they said there's a great big thing and it look was black about 13 feet high standing at Pharaoh's door. And Pharaoh opened up and that thing walked right through his house. He said, guards, get it! And the guards couldn't stop him. He walked right through them. And went into the bedroom of Pharaoh's little Pharaoh Jr. And raised up a big old axe like, like, a, like a sickle. And go... The Bible says that night throughout the land of Egypt there was a great cry. My, my, my. There was not one house where there wasn't one dead. You see, the only house where somebody didn't die was the houses that had the blood of the Lamb. Now, I'll tell you something this morning. Some of you sitting back there and you say, Oh, he's a preacher. Oh, these people. Let me tell you something. I ain't no better than you are. There ain't nobody in here no better than nobody else. All we all are a bunch of dogs, a bunch of sinners that ought to be in hell. But as an 18-year-old boy, I went down to Nebo Baptist Church. And they said, if you'll trust Jesus Christ and His shed blood, He'll save you. That night, the Lord put the blood on my heart. And I stand before you this morning on my way to heaven, saved. All my sins are forgiven because the blood's been applied. That's why we sing, Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? You may be here this morning and you say, Well, Brother Danny, I've been a good person all my life. Well, that don't matter even if it was true. You say, Well... I'm trying to get my act together and live my life better. I'm, I'm, I really, I think I'm doing better. I'm, I'm almost there. No, no. You'll never get there. You'll never get there like that. There's got to be one point in time in your life when you say, I accept the blood that was shed for me on the cross. When that time comes, you'll be saved. If you've never done that, on your heart or not. This this uh, plane crashed. Uh, Avianca plane that went down in New York a couple of days ago. I saw on the news the death toll kept rising until yesterday I heard on the radio in my car that I think the death toll now was uh, uh, 83 or something like that and the living were 77. They're not, they didn't even announce Rich and poor, young and old, black, white, they didn't even know. All they announced was dead and alive. Brother, I just think boiling down to it's not Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Church of God, Pentecostal. What this, this thing ain't boiling down to good people, bad people, fine, upstanding citizens, all that. This thing's boiling down to either saved or lost. Saved or lost. A lot of good people going to hell. A lot of bad people going to heaven. Just because they trusted the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. No one looking around. I have an idea there's somebody here this morning that maybe you've never had the plan of salvation. 
Somebody just sit down and explain it to you like I have this morning. You say, preacher, for the first time in my life, I understand what it means to be saved. Jesus went up there and put that blood on that cross just like they put it over the door. If you want to be saved and go to heaven, you trust that blood. That's it. That's it. You say, well, don't I have to be good? You can't be good. There's none good, no, not one. The blood of or Jesus or hell fire, whichever one you choose. Is there someone here this morning to say, Brother Danny, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I've really, really trusted the blood of Jesus. I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm saved or not. Please pray for me. Would there be one like that here this morning? Just slip up your hand. God bless you, ma'am. Anyone else? God bless you, sir. God bless you. I appreciate that. There's a grown man, a grown lady. Thank you, sir. I see your hand back there in the back. Anyone else? God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. Amen. Now let me ask you something. Why don't you settle that thing this morning? What are you waiting for? It ain't going to get no easier. It's getting closer and closer and closer the time when the death angel passes over. Why don't you that lifted your hands do something about it today? Why don't you do something about it today? Hey man, you can leave this church today knowing that your sins are forgiven. You can do it. You can do it. It can be settled right here this morning, today, before you leave. It can be taken care of. Please do it. Will you do it? We've already got one come to the altar this morning. There may be many, many others. You that lifted your hands especially. If there's doubt in your mind about your salvation, why don't you just get out of your seat this morning on the first verse of this song and come to Jesus and accept it. And whoever prays with these people... You explain to them just to accept His forgiveness and free gift. Amen. Here's another young man. Come over here. Some of you boys might want to come pray with him. Is God dealing with your heart? Dear Lord, help us this morning. Help these that lifted their hands to come to settle this thing between them and God this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just just get out of your seat and come right now. Come on. Come on right now. Just get out of your seat and come. Tell it. Settle it between you and God. Come on this morning. Come on. You need to come. Come on, friend. Come on. Come on. Come on right now. Come on. Don't say no to Jesus. There you go. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. He said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. It's still true today. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Come on, brother. Pray this man. Thank God. Thank God. The blood's never lost its power. Just get out of your seat. Come on this morning. Come on this morning. Don't wait. Don't wait. Tomorrow may be too late. On one dark blood to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot of of God I come. I come. Now listen to me for a second. Listen, they ain't none of us no good. They ain't none of us no better than nobody else. We're all in the same boat. All of sin comes short of the glory of God. People got the wrong idea. They say, boy, so and so's a good person. They can live a Christian life, but I can't. I ain't no good. We're all made out of the same old rotten stuff. They ain't none of us no good. 
There's just one difference between the people in this room this morning. Some of them have got the blood on them, and some of them don't. That's the only difference. That's the only difference. There ain't no big eyes, little use, big shots like somebody's better than somebody. There ain't no such thing as that in God's book. We're all sinners saved by the grace of God, justified by His blood. Don't ever forget that, Christians. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever get to looking down on people and thinking you're better than other people because they don't do just like you or act just like you. The Lord took His blood off of us this morning. We'd all be in just the biggest mess we've ever been in. How about it this morning, friend? While these are praying, while these are doing business with God, if we sing one more verse, would you come? Thank God for this man here that's come. Thank God for these other ones over here that's come. If we sing another verse, would you come? This is your chance. This is your chance. Would you? Come on. We love you. God loves you. You can settle this thing once and for all today. Leave here knowing you're forgiven. One more verse, Brother John. While we sing, would you come? Come on right now. Come on. Come on right now. Hey, man. Just get out of your seat and come. The Lord will receive you. He will. Come on. Amen. There you go. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody come pray with these boys over here. Amen. Silent today. Silent today. Why are we sing? Everybody sing! Just as sing it out! Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Don't wait, man. Don't wait. Tomorrow may be too late. Hallelujah. Still praying this morning. Raise your hand back there, Keith. Keith. This boy just got saved just a few minutes ago. Thank God he done the right thing. He done the right thing. And he can leave he can he can leave here this morning knowing his sins are forgiven. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. Now that we still got some in the oven over here. We'll be done in just a minute. Thank God. Thank God. This young man got saved. Others here are praying. That first song, Brother John had us picked out for a congregational this morning. When I see the blood, boy, when I, it's just like something said amen in me when I seen he had that rope down. It's amazing how the songs in a service just go right along with the preaching lots and lots of times. He don't know what I'm preaching. I don't know what he's singing. But God knows. The Lord works that stuff out. Thank God. Okay, what happened over here, Tim? Which one? One of you boys? Hold it there just a second, boys. You got right with the Lord. One of these boys got saved or both of them got saved? The short one got saved. Got saved this morning. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Them boys playing it smart. They're putting the blood on that door. Man, some of them people in Egypt might have never been to church a day in their life. 
and took heed to that message and put that blood on the door, God would have passed over their family.